Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. A man's arrested accused of killing a Rockford woman last weekend. Police say the suspect has a record of violence involving the victim. A donation to a local fire department literally buys some time in an emergency. The chief says new tools and training will save lives. And Boys and Girls Club of Rockford launches a new digital program. Playing video games will help kids develop skills in the technology industry. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. A Rockford man is arrested, accused of killing a woman last week. 36-year-old John Gregory is charged with first-degree murder. Last Saturday, police were called to a home on Guilford Road for a welfare check. Officers found the front door open. The house had been ransacked. 26-year-old Antoinette Pascal was dead on the scene. An autopsy shows she had been shot under the chin. According to investigators, Gregory and Pascal had a history Gregory was arrested in January for domestic battery. He's accused of tackling and beating Pascal in the front yard of their home. Gregory's in the Winnebago County Jail without bond. He's due in court April 25th. The legal battle over Illinois' assault weapons ban has started in East St. Louis. Governor J.B. Pritzker signed a law banning the sale, distribution, and possession of assault-style weapons earlier this year. Plaintiffs are asking for a preliminary injunction to block the law statewide. The case could go all the way to the Supreme Court. More than 30 states' attorneys are trying to block the law that prevents the sale, distribution, and possession of high-powered semi-automatic weapons. Arguments focused on bans targeting modified weapons like guns with switches. For us, this means that we reset things back to January 9th. This gives all the individuals the ability to go back to acquiring firearms. The state argued the law responds to an acute social issue. They also referenced Supreme Court rulings that say the Second Amendment is not an unlimited right to bear any arms. The court will have to wait another day to hear from former ComEd CEO Ann Pramajor. Instead, lawmakers spent most of today questioning her replacement. That's part of the ongoing ComEd bribery trial. Joe Dominguez became CEO in 2018. He testified he never saw anything that made him think ComEd was bribing former Illinois House Speaker Mike Madigan. He also says he never noticed any crime being committed. Prosecutors pushed Dominguez to admit there were things going on at the company that he only recently learned about. Pramajori was in the courtroom but didn't take the stand. NASCAR and Chicago City officials are addressing concerns about this summer's street race downtown. Earlier this week, NASCAR released information about the closures. The first restrictions will begin June 2nd and will continue through July 15th. Event officials are promising the race will benefit the city, estimating more than $113 million into the local economy. The people that are coming to this race are going to be eating in our restaurants, and riding in our taxi cabs, landing at our airports, um, and all of that helps benefit the downtown area, helps benefit the city. We have enough going on, enough closures, enough traffic. I don't think that it's helpful for the city. There have also been safety concerns about the race. More than 2,000 barriers will be placed along the course. When it comes to noise, officials say NASCAR will be using new mufflers on their cars to reduce the sound. U.S. jobless claims rise to their highest level in more than a year. Applications increased to 239,000 last week. That's up by 11,000 from the week before. It's also the most since January 2022. The four-week average rose to 240,000. It hasn't been that high since November 2021. Nearly 2 million people received aid during the week that ended April 1st. That's a drop from the previous week and close to where numbers were before the pandemic. Meantime, the government reported wholesale prices fell sharply last month. A state line fire department gets some new life saving equipment thanks to a sandwich shop. Byron Fire Protection District received just over $25,000 from firehouse subs. The funds were used to buy battery powered tools used in vehicle extrications. They're replacing corded equipment that's more than 35 years old. We're told the new gear is more powerful and can better handle the hardened steel found in modern vehicles. Byram's interim fire chief says the grant will help new firefighters learn with the upgraded equipment. Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation has granted more than $2 million to first responders across Illinois. More than $83,000 has come to the state line.
Local kids gain a new opportunity to be exposed to one of the fastest growing industries in the world. The Boys and Girls Club has launched a new gaming and esports program. Nicole Delgado was there for the kickoff. Nicole? Yeah, Eric and Mimi. I'm told while this program is new, it can make an immediate impact to those 20 plus students that they have already, as well as engage and recruit more teens in the community. When we first moved over here two years ago, they couldn't believe they had their own gym and own building. Now they have a state-of-the-art gaming room and esports room, and, it, and they just, it's just going to help them know that people want them to succeed. From gaming chairs to graphics, visuals, and the speed of the gaming equipment, Thursday was the launch of the Digital Equality Program at the Boys and Girls Club. It's all thanks to a $75,000 grant from Comcast. President and CEO of the Boys and Girls Club of Rockford, Chip Stoner, says it's just another tool for state line kids to learn and have opportunities to be successful. It's, it's all focused on the gaming and esports with the highest level of equipment there is. So the idea is to engage and recruit teens for this program and develop potential careers in the whole gaming uh, world. The space includes six gaming PCs, a console gaming area complete with three Xbox and Nintendo Switches, and 12 desktops for academic use. Co-founder and executive director of Community, Julian Fitzgerald, says this will not only expand and challenge the kids, but also the staff too. 97% of teens are gaming on a weekly basis, 83% of you know, minority you know, youth are playing games on a weekly basis as well. And so it's very important to give them both the means of you know, further engaging in that space, but the, the programs that are going to be going on here are also helping them understand the career path that can be explored. The hope is for kids to develop skills in what is a rapid growing technology industry. Well, that's what we always want to do at the Boys and Girls Club, to level the playing field to make sure all our kids have the same opportunities. The Boys and Girls Club of Rockford can't wait for how the students will respond to the new upgrades. Eric, Mimi. Thanks, Nikel. A member of the Air National Guard's arrested in connection to the leak of military documents earlier this week. Coming up, we'll tell you what we know about the suspect and what military leaders are doing to keep a leak like this from happening again. It was another warm day across the state line, almost summer-like out there with these temperatures reaching the 80s, the lower 80s. We'll talk about the big pattern that's set to change, though. That's coming up in your first warm weather forecast in a little bit. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team with Mimi Murphy and meteorologist Savannah Brito. Authorities have taken a man into custody in connection with the Pentagon document leak. Washington correspondent Alexander Limon shows us how the Pentagon's taking a close look at its policies. The Justice Department has confirmed that a member of the Air Force National Guard was arrested in connection with the Pentagon leak and that arrest happened in Massachusetts. Today, the Justice Department arrested Jack Douglas Teixeira. Just days after leaked Pentagon documents became widespread on Twitter, a suspect is in custody. In connection with an investigation into alleged unauthorized removal, retention, and transmission of classified national defense information. While the Justice Department is leading the ongoing investigation, the Pentagon says it too is taking the issue seriously and is reviewing who can access certain classified information. It is important to understand uh, that we do have stringent guidelines in place for safeguarding classified and sensitive information. The Pentagon says that process includes the need to obtain security clearances and the signing of non-disclosure agreements. This was a deliberate criminal act, a violation of those guidelines. Because of the early stage of the investigation, it's unclear whether others in the chain of command could also be held responsible for the leak. But Massachusetts Congressman Jake Auchincloss says the U.S. first has to make sure the leak doesn't jeopardize Ukraine's defense against Russia will be how do we do our utmost as a nation to support the Ukrainian counteroffensive this spring. Teixeira was arrested without incident and he'll have an initial appearance at the U.S. District Court for the District of Massachusetts. In Washington, Alexandra Limon. We had another warm sunny day here in the state line. Coming up, Savannah shows us we get one, maybe two more days of summer in April, but her forecast includes severe weather and possible snow. She's next.
Now, your first warned weather forecast from meteorologist Savannah Brito. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back and happy Thursday. Beautiful summer like pattern. If you enjoy early June, you probably liked the last couple of days. Monday, we did make it into the lower 70s in most areas across the state line. Upper 70s then the day to follow this past Tuesday. Yesterday, we made it into the lower 80s. 82 was the high in Rockford. Same with today. Most areas did make it to the 80s once again. The last time temperatures were in the 70s and 80s right around this, actually a little bit cooler, was in October, the end of it, October. 21st to the 24th. We did have days in the 70s and 180 on the 22nd. On average, we don't usually see the first 80 degree day though until April 23rd. So it did come a little bit early this year. Hopefully you guys have gotten outside, take, took advantage of the nice weather. We are going to see it for one more day. Showers and storms move in Saturday, but temperatures will stay warm and then big changes by Sunday. We're at 81 right now in Rockford, 82 in Rochelle, 83 in Sterling, 79 a little bit cooler in Galena. Everyone is well above average out there this evening, though. We have had a windy day, too. We're at 31 miles per hour in Galena, 22 in Freeport. So you can see where peak wind gusts pretty much west of the Rockford area are still checking in right now. We do have a fire, a red flag warning, though, for some areas that does include Stevenson, Joe Davies, and Carroll counties in northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin, though. Green Rock and Walworth County, so avoid burning. Our humidity levels are going to come up a little bit. There's more moisture and cloud cover that will work its way back in starting as early as tomorrow. Our winds, however, are going to stay pretty gusty, but not as gusty as what we have seen. So over the next 48 hours tonight, specifically, they do die down to around 15 or so miles per hour, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow, then they are going to increase again up to about 20, 25 miles per hour. The southerly direction continuing to warm us up near that 80 degree mark for one more day. We'll be in the upper 70s then on Saturday, but that's when winds are going to get gusty again up to 20 to 25 miles per hour. Terry in Genoa Weather Watch recording a temperature of 82 degrees humidity level pretty low down to 24 percent southwesterly winds around 17 miles per hour but gusts again are ranging between about 20 to 25 miles per hour. Lots of sunshine. You can see a little bit of clouds starting to work their way in. Going to be brief though, we are anticipating another mostly clear night as temperatures stay well above average, so it is going to be another mild night. Cloud cover doesn't work its way back in, in uh, totally ki kind of completely taking over the state line until tomorrow late afternoon, early evening. So it will be mostly sunny out there to start the day off, then turn over to partly cloudy by the overnight hours though. We are going to see mostly cloudy conditions. By about 7, 8 in the morning, the first round of showers, potentially a couple of thunderstorms that's going to move in then west of the Rockford area spreading further. It does look to be capped though our environment, so anything should not be severe at that point in time. However, the second round that comes later in the day that could be severe along the cold front. So strong to severe thunderstorms are possible across the state line. Temperatures are definitely going to take a plummet though between Saturday and then into Sunday and even Sunday night into Monday. We could be talking about some accumulating snow for the most part. Greater chances and our greatest chances of accumulating snow that's going to fall north and then also northeast of the state line. But still some models do have some lighter accumulations across the state line that would be into Monday morning. But for Saturday, our eyes are on the sky because we do have a marginal risk that's still lower level of one out of five, but something that does need to be monitored as we do get closer to the weekend then. But temperatures do stay nice. 80 on Friday, 78 Saturday, but 47. That'll be the high by Sunday. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not looking forward to Sunday. Those are some abrupt changes. <laughs> yeah. Savannah, we're all over the place with those. Thank you. Reagan's in next with sports. Fred Van Vliet has some tough decisions to make about his future in Toronto. And more of our local athletes put pen to paper about their futures. Reagan tells us who they are and where they're going next. Now sports with Reagan Holgate. Despite Fred Van Vliet's efforts, this up and down Raptors season came to a bitter end last night as the Bulls bested them in a play in match. The Auburn graduate put up 26 points with 7 for 13 shooting from behind the three point arc. Even with the ugly ending, the soon to be free agent has indicated that he's open to remaining in Toronto long term. Van Vliet has spent seven years in the NBA, all with the Raptors franchise, and he plans to take his time and won't rush the opt out decision. I don't think it's uh, you know the right timing. Um, it's pretty still in the moment. Uh, it's a tough one, obviously a tough way to go out. So uh, 
you know, take a couple of days, a couple of weeks. I don't think there's much rush um, to jump into a decision one way or another. Um, I know we're very dramatic around here, so sorry to ruin that for you, um, Eric. But uh, yeah, it'll take some time. Tonight will be Jonathan Taves' last game as a Blackhawk and possibly in the NHL. He's been dealing with health issues in the last few seasons and has not decided if he'll retire. The Blackhawks tweeted that the team had a number of conversations with Taves throughout the season about his future. They said that they had the difficult conversation that the Blackhawks won't be re-signing him. The Blackhawks said the team wanted to give him a proper send-off and they're excited to give fans a chance to show Taves how much he means to them. I think the city of Chicago will be forever indebted to him for the amazing ride that, that he took us on and, uh, you know, wherever he goes and wherever he plays next, uh, he'll be a Blackhawk forever. And I think tonight will be a, a great opportunity for our fans to show him that appreciation and, and give him the send off that, that he deserves. Davidson said it was not an easy decision, but it's best for the growth of the young players. Tave spent 15 seasons in Chicago, has been captain since 2008, and helped end the 49-year Stanley Cup drought in 2010. The Hawks host the Flyers in the season finale tonight. It was a big day for some of our local Boylan athletes as they officially put pen to paper to continue their athletic careers. And it was a full house in the cafeteria to celebrate the seven who signed during today's spring ceremony. The parents were decked out in their new gear, not the same green and gold they're used to. And we know those guys, the dynamic duo of Mark Harris and Jamar Johnson, the two cousins will be attending Roosevelt University to play football together. Here's a look at the others who signed today. Swimmer Nathan Anderson is taking his talents to St. Ambrose University. Samantha Apino will continue playing softball at Edgewood. Alberto Chavez, another football player, he's going to Carroll University. Tessa Lawson will hit the links for the pioneers of Carroll. And Molly Ryan will keep swimming at Grinnell College. Congrats to all of our athletes who signed today. We'll be right back. Not seeing any rain that's going to develop tonight or tomorrow, but by Saturday that's a different story. And especially by Sunday, we go from maybe seeing severe weather, strong to severe thunderstorms are possible Saturday to maybe some light snow. Most accumulation should stay north and northeast of the state line. But temperatures are going to take a toll. 80 again tomorrow, 78 Saturday. We're down to 47 though by Sunday. Does look to warm up back to the mid 60s by Thursday next week though, guys. I think there's a mistake on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, that does not look right. Thanks, Savannah. <laughs> Thank you for spending some time with us. Stay safe.